prestige is a pawnbroker's with a difference. Whether it's a helicopter or diamonds, I get a real buzz out of handling big ticket items. This is an amazing bit of kit. Based in one of the UK's wealthiest counties, with a roster of super rich clients. I've hardly used them, they're immaculate. They deal in the most lucrative luxury goods. The value is about 150 grand. This week. Oh my God. The team battle to dodge the fakes. These aren't real. The boss hits the med. It's flat out, Harry, I'm telling you, it's 100 miles an hour. And emotions run high. Oh, I feel like quite a nice session. Welcome to the world of posh porn. Every week, over a thousand people contact this upmarket pawnbrokers. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Hello, um, Lawrence. All looking to exchange luxury goods for fast cash. One, two, three. But many items aren't quite what they first seem. No. This doesn't quite feel right to me. Yeah. And it is incredible how good some of these fakes are, and you really, really have to be careful. You should also sell. James and his team's challenge is to sort out the real from the counterfeit. I don't know if it's genuine or not. We're basically like police dogs, sniffing out real items from the dodgy goods. There are a lot of fake wines about. Making deals on fakes could shut up the shop for good. It's genuine. Brilliant. Yes. We can't afford to take one dodgy item in. It could ruin us as a business. And this is telling me these aren't diamonds. For many of the asset-rich, cash-poor Surrey set, the pawn shop can be a first port of call when they have a new passion project to fund. What exactly are they, do you know? This morning, James has received an inquiry from an aspiring photographer. OK, thanks, Millie, thanks for the call. We've got a girl who uh, has lived locally, is moving and just wants to get rid of some art, so and they're quite good pieces. Did she tell what artist? Yeah, she did. OK. Uh, I can't actually pronounce, pronounce it. it, so I'm not going to attempt to. I struggle gonna... with a lot of them myself. I'm not really into art. It doesn't really appeal to me that much, but it's a big part of the business, and that's why I give it to Lawrence. I've had an inquiry yeah. of a lovely young lady, so I thought of you, naturally. She's got some art. She doesn't want a loan. She just wants to sell the pieces. Fantastic. Can you deal with it? For yeah, of course I can. Nice one. Thank Genius, you. Yeah, I love my art. Paintings belong to 42-year-old Millie, a girl about town with very expensive taste. My week is probably about 80% shopping, the rest work. But yeah, I'm whizzing about here, there and everywhere. I love that. I love the luxury lifestyle. Just want to carry on what I've been doing and spend, spend, spend. Thank you, see you soon, bye, thank you. Millie's just bought a new flat in London to nip to Knightsbridge shops or Bond Street boutiques whenever the mood takes her. Among her collection of couture, over 300 pairs of designer shoes. I only just moved in literally a day ago and I'm finding shoes that obviously I didn't know I had. Can't get enough shoes. I need them. The last time I went to this shop I bought 15 pairs of shoes all in one go. These were like 920, but I've never worn them. <laughs> I probably spend seven, eight hundred pounds a week on designer clothes and shoes. Absolutely stunning. Pink. I just like to look good. Doesn't every girl like to look good, you know? The money that I have is from my um, modeling agency a few years ago. And um, I actually was given some money when my nan passed away. You know, I've just been spending all, all that money. <laughs> Inheritance. <laughs> Millie doesn't want the spending to stop and thinks she may have hit on the perfect plan to keep the good times rolling. I just love photography. It's always been my passion. But now, you know, I just want to do it for my business because I know I'm good. <laughs> I know I'm very good. Well, that's a nice one. I think photographs make people happy, especially pebbles. <laughs> Anyone who's got, like, a, an old boat might want that. <laughs> She's sold a few of her snaps. Now Millie wants to turn her pastime into a money spinner. I would love my photography to just be my main business, but I can't afford a camera. I know it sounds silly, but I don't want to give up my beautiful items, my luxury lifestyle. Professional kit costs thousands, so Millie plans to sell two modern paintings to raise the funds. I've got this one by Andrew Protsuk. This one, I might get about £10,000 for it. 
I mean, every time I look at it, you can see different things in it, so it's just one of my favourites. These are sought after paintings, and I was very lucky to get it at the time. So this is by Shane McCubrey. It's absolutely stunning. It's one of my biggest pieces by him. It's got glitter in it. It's got pink in it. It's just absolutely beautiful. But obviously, it's original. It's a one-off. It's about £3,000. It's just one of those pieces that you'll never see again. To ensure Millie's paintings are legitimate, the pawn shop needs to have them collected and examined by an expert. Hopefully, I would at least get £10,000 for both of them. How are you? Yeah, right, yeah, fine, Good. thank you. If they did come back and offered me five grand, I'd just laugh at them. I just, I just wouldn't even bother. Be careful with it. Make sure you don't drop it. It's sad to see them go, because I've had them so long. You've got to do what you've got to do, haven't you? Even if Millie's masterpieces are the real deal, will they be worth the cash injection she's after? Loaning against luxury goods is how this pawn shop made its name, but a regular array of oddities also pass through its doors. This is a horse's oh, hoof. Oh, you are joking. I've made sandwiches out of the rest. Oh, James. As well as the weird and the wonderful, the business also receives inquiries about items way too cumbersome to bring to the shop. Come and have a look at this. Do we do loans against motorhomes? We can loan against anything if it's of value. This morning, Joe has been contacted about what could be the biggest item the team have ever dealt with. It's like a little palace, isn't it? I know. How big is it? It's 40 foot. That's a monster. Mm. He wants a short-term loan against his Damon Ultrasport RV motorhome. Do you think that's a canopy? You ain't going to eat that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Done anything like that before, have we, Joe? So no. it's quite... Um, it's quite a nice thing to come in. If it all goes wrong for me, at least I'll have somewhere to live. You know what I mean? I pride myself on loaning against almost anything of value and I wasn't going to get beaten by a 40-foot RV. The mobile holiday home is 45-year-old Roy's pride and joy. This is otherwise known as my baby. Remote-controlled satellite dish. So you've got a double bed there. A double bed there, convector oven, washer dryer, lovely shower room. Actually, that's better than my shower at home. Flat screen TV, pucker Del Boy bed, you know. Might need a pint of milk and a fresh loaf of bread. Other than that, everything is on board. I don't think there's another one of these in the country. I think this is the only one. But Roy's holiday home was only acquired after a horrific accident on a building site 16 years ago. Yeah, it was 1998, um, and the wrong part of one of the buildings had been taken out. Or some bits of the building came down on me, and I could hear the machine coming towards me, but I couldn't tell which direction it was coming from until I felt the links of the tracks. I remember screaming as loud as I possibly could, but then I think they must have looked down and realised they can't see the ends of my legs, and there was 36 tonne of machinery on top of them, and went through nearly 11 years of um, operations. After years of intense rehabilitation, incredibly, catastrophe struck a second time. Two days after finally wearing two shoes, walked unaided into a supermarket, and the floor gave way underneath me. Two weeks later, they just said to me, look, you've got to come in. You've got to go in hospital tomorrow morning, quarter past ten. Your leg's coming off below the knee. After the amputation, long-term partner Jill remained at Roy's side. At first, he didn't want me to see him in the hospital. He didn't want me to see his leg, and he just cried. And then he thought I was going to leave him because I didn't think he was a man. You know, I mean, I said to him, you know, at the end of the day, losing a leg, you know, it hasn't changed him as a person. Just go with it. <laughs> But instead of allowing the accidents to break his spirit, Roy has been working on an ambitious plan to help his fellow amputees. All right. Yeah. Lovely day. After all that grief of hospitals and things like that, the families you know, really need a break and they need to know that the person they're looking after can actually smile again, you know, and just find themselves. Roy's dream, opening a specialist holiday park that allows the less able-bodied and their families to enjoy time away together. I want to get £20,000, you know, in finance from this, just so I can get started 
He's willing to pawn his pride and joy, his RV, in order to make that dream a reality. If we get the right off, I'm going to use the finance and encourage other less abled people and their families to recover, relax. But will the sacrifice get Roy the five-figure funding he needs from the pawn shop? Back at Weybridge, another expensive item has got motor enthusiast James excited. This is an amazing bit of kit. Joe, have you seen this? We've got a Koenigsegg Hydrolift speedboat out in Spain. Well, that's nice. Can you imagine yourself in that? Easily. Little bowl of tacos, sombrero, speeding around the pool. No, I could easily get in that, no problem. Yeah. How much is it worth? A couple of hundred grand, no, I really? think. Really? It's an amazing bit of kit. It's uh, more down in Spain, in Port Banu, so... I'll tell you what, I'd love to get out there and have a little look at that. It's fast and it's red. That's the uh, sort of thing I'm interested in. The fact that the boat was based out in Marbella was a win-win situation for us. I've been meaning to get out there for quite some time and investigate that market. Can we look at flights for yep. this week? All right, yeah, I'll sort that out for you now then. What about me? <laughs> You've got to stay here, Joe. You've got to hold the fault. I'm very fluent in Spanish. You're not fluent in Spanish. El mol entiglianto con la cerita. Se le molta la molta inglienta a la guasinota poto bonosa en divina. Yeah, bless her. She's been a couple of times on uh, <laughs> these bingo weekend things that they do. And uh, she thinks she's fluent. She's amazing, really. His pawn shop might be popular in well-heeled Surrey, but is James ready to take on Marbella's super wealthy expats? Although the pawn shop deals mainly with high-end goods, clients can come from all walks of life. I haven't got a clue of your interest, but we're moving abroad and we want to get rid of things. And the reasons for pawning their valuables can vary wildly. It could be something like a boob job, new teeth, or just something simple like putting dinner on the table. But some clients' stories sound too good to be true. This morning, James has received an email claiming to be from the daughter of deposed Libyan dictator Colonel Gaddafi. I am Aisha Gaddafi, daughter of the former Libyan leader. What? Yes, okay. Where did you get that from? Seriously, it's just come through as an email. Oh, that's a bloody wind up. No, this could be what? true. That's not true. I'm in an Algerian refugee camp. <laughs> At this point, I can't communicate with you by phone, but only by email. Oh, she's got a laptop. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what they're like. But no phone. When these emails come through, in your heart of hearts, you know they're not real. But there's always a little niggler there. The total fund is 100 million, and you shall have 30% of it. Well, that's nice of her, isn't it? That's a sp spam thing. No, it's not. James does get carried away with some of the emails and the inquiries that we get in. I think it's because if they weren't a hoax, they'd be so interesting and they'd be such a good deal for him to do that he doesn't really want to let it go. Oh, yeah, hold on a minute. All we need to do is send uh, 10 million. <laughs> yeah, there you are. So just to help her move the rest of the funds across and we get 30 million back. Just get my checkbook out, seriously. <laughs> but why don't we have a little whip round? A whip round for what? Gaddafi's daughter. While James mulls over the latest scam, resident handbag expert Patrick has had a more realistic but still potentially problematic inquiry. Out of the percentages of bags that come through the door every week, about 40% of them tend to be fakes. Well, I know the styles, but it's difficult to tell what leather that is, whether that's caviar or calfskin. And also I need to know the size, is it, you know, is it small, medium or jumbo? But, you know, I don't know what the hardware is, whether that's tarnished. I do actually need to see them. The designer handbags belong to 50-year-old Sarah, a hair extension specialist from Surrey. People often think I'm very glamorous. I look after myself and I am quite conscious of how I look. I couldn't be somebody that slouched around in a tracksuit morning, noon and day. One of my favourite items is my beautiful Hermes scarf. It was bought for me by somebody really, really special. This is where I have my perfume and makeup. I do like my Chanel lip gloss. Chanel number no. five. It's classic. For much of her life, Sarah was part of the Surrey jet set. When I was married, I had a beautiful life. We lived in a beautiful home. We had lots of luxury holidays. We had a comfortable, comfortable lifestyle, which was lovely. But now the mother of two has had to adapt and tighten her belt. Come on. 
When I divorced from my husband, I walked away with nothing, took my children and that was it. Um, and we moved into a rented house. Suddenly it was quite frightening. I had to do everything on my own with very, very little. It was a struggle to get food on the table sometimes. Sarah's main income now comes from her wealthy former neighbours. This is a very upmarket area. This is what they call the sort of Hollywood of Surrey. They make up much of the clientele for her hair extensions business. So a lot of the ladies here are very glamorous, very beautiful. The houses are probably around sort of 10 million. It's really, really important to source the right hair and use the right quality. And I've got the most amazing Russian hair now that I'm really, really happy with. Sarah hopes her new venture will prove lucrative. It's gorgeous. But to expand, she needs quick cash and is looking yeah. for a minimum of three and a half thousand pounds. Happy with that? I love it. Her past, living the Surrey high life, means Sarah has a number of designer handbags which she wants to sell. I'll be really sad to get rid of them, but I've got to move my business on now. The pawn shop handles hundreds of designer handbags on a weekly basis. He's just on another call. Can I get him to ring you back? And Sarah's on her way in to hand hers over for closer inspection. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, I sent you an email regarding some bags. Oh, yeah, I yeah, spoke yeah. to somebody on the phone. Yeah, you spoke I to James, James, I think, yeah. I've hardly used them. They're immaculate. No, this one's you. in very good condition. Why don't you use them? I Anymore, sadly, but... Oh, it'll come back. That's nicer, that's very nice condition, it's very sellable. Can I give you that one for a second? Yeah. Oh, that's a vintage one, isn't it? Yeah, oh. it's a nice shape. Yeah, it's a bit more long. understated now. I've looked after it really well. I've got one more, I've got a black oh. one. Again, nice, they're always nice for the boxes as well. Again, you know, it's had no real wear at all, has it? No, I've really looked after yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll come back to you with a figure. I'll, yeah. I'll do some work on them now and I'll come back to you with yeah. the figure. And... See what we give you for it. Thank All right. Thank you. Okay, okay see you soon. Speak to you. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. bye. Although the handbags look the part, they'll need to be closely examined before any deal can be struck. From time to time, we do get people coming in with fakes. You know, some guys will buy, you know, they've got a girlfriend, a hot girlfriend, they want to impress her, they buy her a nice bag. But of course, it could be a copy. Because they don't want to pay, you know, three and a half thousand for a bag. They'll go to and buy a copy one for maybe a few hundred pounds. Some of the women do get duped by that. That happens. <laughs> Less easy to fake are large motorhomes, but boss James still needs to inspect Roy's RV. Apparently it's 40 foot long, so it's a massive bit of kit. I love the pictures of it. It may be worth quite a few quid. The last time I went in a caravan was when I was about six years old, so I think we went down to Bognor Regis for five days and it was quite an experience. If that's it, that is a, that is a business, isn't it? It's got awnings, bits that come out. It looks like it's in lovely nick, so... Yeah, I'm excited to go and have a look inside. Roy, how James. are you? Yeah, definitely. Nice to finally meet you. Yeah, and me bus. Yeah, yeah, I was just having a look. It's beautiful, isn't it? She is. She's be pride and joy. Not quite seen anything like it. Let's get inside and have a little look. Right, here we are, mate. This is it. This is where it all goes on. Yeah. Like being in a proper, proper apartment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, she's lovely. When Roy was showing me around inside, I thought it was absolutely incredible. It's like a palace on wheels. I wouldn't mind uh, getting it started up. Yeah, no. No, well, listen to it. Listen to her purr. Right, here we go. So, Although Roy's uh, RV appears to be in good condition, the real test is whether it's roadworthy. I don't know how you're feeling, but I'm nervous as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's a beast, isn't it? This is a block of flats on wheels. Yeah. I'm just going to test it. Yeah, yeah, you've got to be gentle. Nice yeah. and gentle. When I first pulled off in the RV, I was very, very nervous. I applied the brakes and I instantly heard a load of crockery and cutlery smashing in the background. This is a monster. Now I'm just taking it a bit more seriously. Now we're laughing. This is where I come into my own, Roy. Happy days. James may feel assured at the wheel, but Roy clearly doesn't share his confidence. I feel more of a man than I did a half hour ago. I've driven a lot of things in my time. Nothing as big as this. Say, is this the biggest? This is the biggest by a long job, but just give it one of them. Just to let them all know we're in. Days. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
Cheers, Roy. Thanks for that. I'll speak to you in a couple of days. All right, mate. Giving you plenty to think about. Cheers. Thank you. See you later, mate. Safe Bye. journey back. Well, it's an amazing bit of kit. I mean, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm a bit concerned about the mechanical side of it because it's such a big lump and there's a lot potentially that could go wrong with a thing like this. But generally, it's in good nick. He wants to do an amazing thing with his business idea and I think it's a worthwhile call. Just can't wait to get back to the office, do a bit more work on the sums and see if we can get back to him with a figure that helps him out. The RV deal is heading in the right direction, but another is about to come crashing to a halt. James has received bad news from Marbella. That's the boat guy. He's not interested. He's facilitated it, so he's all done and dusted. The owner of the boat has been in touch and he's found uh, another source of, um, of a loan, so he's basically borrowed money from someone else. But we're still going and we'll um, go and see what's going on out there. You never know, he might get presented with another boat. Well, anything could happen. The world's our oyster. With his flight already booked and convinced there's money to be made in Marbella, just days later, James and colleague Kristen head to southern Spain. Here we go, Chris. There's the Marbella sign. Oh, yeah, there it is. We're officially in, in, Marbella. in Marbella land. I decided to take Kristen away with me. She'd never been to Spain before. I thought it'd be a great opportunity, especially as we might come across some high-end jewellery. Keep your wits about you. Try and sniff yeah. out some cash. <laughs> I can smell it a while away. Oh, good. James and Kristen head to the port, the focal point for Marbella's wealthy residents. I'm liking the boats. I can almost uh, <laughs> I can smell the money. I mean, look at the boats out here. They're millions and millions of pounds worth of yachts out here. I'm sure some of these boats are worth 20, 30 million. Every other car is a Bentley, Ferrari or a Lamborghini. There's money out here, there's wealth here, and the assets are here. Marbella's wealth may be dazzling, but without any clients, none of it will be heading James's way. With James away on business in Marbella, it's left to his assistant Joe to keep the peace. You insulted me by You're saying... You're just taking it talking about my hair. Yeah. I'm talking about your face. My hair... I'll go and tell him to pack it in. It's like me saying about nipples or... Now, now, you like two. No, no, no. You, you're yeah. talking about my hair. I'm talking about Now, now. Hair. Pack it in. No, no. Be nice to each other. You're They're nice. a little bit cheekier to nice. me than they are James, I think, but um, I won't take no crap, so it doesn't really matter. Right, that's it. Back to... Come on, then. Let's get the... Go <laughs> Let's get the... <laughs> Let's get the... <laughs> In Marbella, boss James isn't leaving anything to chance after his first deal there fell through. Marbella is like Weybridge by the seaside. It's got similar wealthy clients with a wealth of opportunity in terms of assets to lend against. I didn't want it to be a wasted trip. I was determined to make the most of it. Desperate to drum up other business opportunities, James makes an urgent appeal for new customers on local radio. First of all, we're going to be chatting to James Constantino and looking at some of the amazing things that people are pawning nowadays. We loan against almost anything of value, but we focus ourselves at the sort of high end of the market. He's a real entrepreneur and he's one of these driven people that does not like to fail. Is it the golden age for pawnbrokers at the moment? Well, I think it is actually. The point of coming here today really was just to get our message out there that we're here uh, for a few days and we're able to appraise some items. You know, hopefully there'll be people out there that will have heard the message. But has he done enough to entice the locals to bring him their valuables? In Weybridge, Patrick is facing a challenge of a different kind, dealing with a hearing-impaired couple. They've brought in some handbags which they're hoping to loan against. Do you have the dust bag? No dust bag, no? Just this. Yeah, I don't know if he's all right. Looking for the tag on this. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. This one, not right. This is no good, this one. I always admire the front of some people that come in and just try and convince you that it's, it's definitely real, and you know it isn't. 
this one is the only one that's right, I would only lend this one is 50 pound, that's it. 20, 40, 50. Out of the lot, Patrick spots one bag good enough to offer a loan against. They were looking for five, six hundred pounds. Fifty pounds was about the best I could do. Drive safely. It's a shame, but there we go. See you soon. Bye. In Marbella, James's radio appeal has already reaped rewards, with a potential client contacting the office. Joe, how are you doing? Hola. How are you? Good. How's it going? Out, out here, I'm telling you, it's 100 miles an hour. I'm actually in the port now. Yeah, I'm actually looking at some boats. Oh, you are looking at some boats? Yeah, I'm looking at some boats now. It's working my balls off. Oh, isn't that funny? So the little speedboat pulled out, and now you're checking out yachts for people. That's right. We've had some calls here. Yeah. Um, there's a lady called Lily. She lives out there. She's got a lot of um, jewellery, apparently. She wants you to have a look at while you're over there to loan against them. I've emailed you all her details. Oh, OK, well, that would be good. No. Get on to that and I'll try and meet up with her. All right. All right, Joe. Cheers. Right. See ya. Bye. God, he actually sounds stressed for the first time ever. The jewellery belongs to 59-year-old Lily, originally from Singapore and now living the high life in Marbella with her husband, Leif. Oh, what a beautiful day today. Yeah, huh? Nice. Maybe go to the beach or what and have a nice beach lunch? That'd be nice. Yeah. Lily's palatial home is in one of Marbella's most desirable districts. We have got 360 degrees view. The mere fact that we can get up to sunshine, it brings peace and calm into our life. And most of all, we're surrounded by two beautiful dogs that love us to bits. We love our home. We're very contented with what we have. This is our palace. My husband he was a very successful uh, businessman. He's got his own consultant company for uh, selling properties. I'm a life coach, a master practitioner, and also a hypnotherapist. Lily is planning to mark her upcoming 60th birthday by splashing out on a designer watch. Bruno, this way. I've got my eyes set on the Patek Philippe watch, and I think I will go for the new model. And um, out goes with the old, and in comes with the new. In order to fund her expensive birthday present to herself, Lily is planning to sell off some jewellery inherited from her mother. That is so beautiful, isn't it? I remember when my mum had this. My God, she had a beautiful silver sari when she wore this. A lot of history. But it's very, yes, a lot of history in there. Yeah. I love diamonds. I've never heard of any woman not liking diamonds. In Marbella, you see diamonds of all shapes and sizes, of all different colours. Women do parade their uh, wealth. It's their way of showing that they have reached a stage where they've accomplished great things in their life. I'm going to show him yeah. this too. Yes, I think this is beautiful. Perfect. You happy with that? Muy bien. I'm looking for roughly around forty to 50000 because I know of its worth. He's going to give us a private view. Ah, private view. That's yes. very good. Yes. Yeah. Then we can go off to lunch after that, since it's such no a beautiful today. day. No but make time today. Today's yeah, my no day. Time. Today's my day. Sure. Yes. In Dorset, Roy, who's looking to pawn his 40 foot motorhome, is enjoying what could be his last family holiday in the RV. Oh, is this your little tree house? I'm going to miss all this sort of stuff a lot. Really am. We'll still be able to come here and drive here, and, but it's not going to be the same, is it? Pitching a tent when we've got, you know, we've got the Ritz on wheels. Roy lost part of his leg after two accidents 13 years ago and wants to raise £20,000 to start a holiday park for fellow amputees. She doesn't want it to go. She's going to be really upset when it goes. She's but gonna... it's not going to be gone for long. No, she'll miss it. We'll all miss it. Yeah. When won't we? Yeah. Well, we'll probably cry. He will probably cry. <laughs> I will. Yeah, he I will. Know, you will. know he'll cry. I know I will. Everyone Just thinking about it now, I but want to well up. that's the thing, you know, we've got to make sure that it comes back. In Surrey, Lawrence has been put in charge of valuing Millie's artworks. Although well-versed in traditional art, modern paintings remain outside his comfort zone. The abstract art. It's not everybody's taste. I wouldn't want it hanging up on my walls at home. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> He's heading to see specialist dealer Ben to discover how much Millie's paintings are worth. Hi, Ben, how are you? Nice to see you, mate. 
we recognise the Shane McCubrey. It's a beautiful piece. And the Protsuk. We don't often see mm. these, these works by Shane. People that buy Shane's work tend to keep them. I think Millie might be surprised about the value of this piece. OK, let's have a look at the Protsuk. His work is hard to find. Mm. It's only the last four or five years it's come to the UK. He does occasional large piece, which is probably mm. half this size. Yeah. The value of his smaller pieces can be really quite high. A larger piece is obviously very difficult yeah. for us to value. OK, well, thanks for your time, Ben. Pleasure. I'll speak to you Thank soon. Thank you, Lawrence. I mean, that seemed to go quite well. I mean, Ben was very enthusiastic. I mean, I've got a couple of concerns. I want the Protsuk. It's just so big. I, mean, I just hope that the value that Ben comes up with meets Millie's expectations. That's so important, but... We we'll just have to wait and see. In Spain, James is nervously awaiting the arrival of Lily, his first Marbella customer. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Lily. Lily. Hi, nice James. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Lily was obviously well healed and typical of what I thought a Marbella client should look like. What can you tell us about this? These were all my mother's. She bought quite a few of these things because she wore a lot of saris at that time. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. an old piece. That's my grandmother's who handed down to my mum to, that's nice. to me. Yeah, that's lovely. That uh, rubies from Ruby. Jaipur, actually. Well, that's a Yegelo couture that my mum bought me, but I don't wear because it's a bit dated. But again, an older person would... It's a very feminine watch. So all this stuff you, you're looking to... You would just want to sell? A valuation sell. for yeah. it, to okay. sell it, if I get a good price, yes. We'll take our time over the next couple of hours going okay. through it, and uh, we'll get back I to I hope you don't send me a postcard from Bahamas and wish <laughs> you're not here. No, we don't do postcards. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thank you for your time. My initial reaction was there's a few pieces in there that may be a little disappointing, but there are one or two items that are actually quite um, special in there, so we need a little bit more time with those pieces. Gem specialist Kristen casts an expert eye over Lily's jewels. Her findings will determine whether James's trip has been a waste of time or not. These here are just going to be the gold weight value. Okay. Maybe a little bit more with the stones. Yeah. Although the stones are real, when it comes to items like these, vintage doesn't necessarily mean valuable. Many people think that antique jewellery goes up in value, but that's not always the case. Certain items from the 60s and 70s and 80s diminishes in value with time. Just when Lily's haul looks like being a disappointment, James and Kristen spy something. A very nice ruby in the middle, yeah. uh, and the diamonds are really good quality set on the outside. OK. The stones are very clean, and they're bright yeah, like as well. There's some exciting pieces, and there's some not-so-exciting pieces. So, in terms of value, retail, quite a lot of money, actually, but uh, the secondary market's fairly flat. So, will the jewellery be worth enough for James to give his first client in Marbella good news? Back in the UK, single mum Sarah is at home with her daughter Bianca. She's anxious to hear if her designer handbags can bring in the cash she needs for her hair extensions business. Every girly loves a bit of Chanel, we all do. So I'll miss them hugely. I'm really sad because I, you know, I've taken great care of them. I'm upset they're going. Oh. But well, when I make lots of money, I'll buy you one. I'm definitely okay. not selling mine. So you'll get there in the end. I'm really excited. I hope I get what I'm looking for. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. It should yeah. be positive. Yeah. Oh. Fingers crossed. Sarah's hoping to get between three and five thousand pounds for the bags, but the valuation is proving problematic for Patrick. The real problem is this one here. I'm not sure what this phase is. These I deal with all day long. I have these in every week. These, I don't know. With so many fakes on the market, Patrick needs a second opinion from expert Claudia. Really, the valuation could all hinge on that one bag. It's a difference of me saying, yeah, I can do that sort of figure, or no, I can't. Hi, Patrick. Hi, How, How are you? you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks. Good to see you. Nice Looks brand new. Yeah. The client brought it in, I just thought it was really Stitching, nice. Stitching, perfect. The stamp and the screws are perfect. Let me see the number. That is 2009. This is definitely a genuine bag, yeah, so you don't right. have to worry. Good. This one doesn't have a sticker. Yeah, you're happy but with that. I'm happy with this. Yeah, I mean, th this feels absolutely right. Everything looks right. I mean, you can see that if the finishing here, it's, it's yeah. so well done. Yeah. But these are the little details that you pay for. The bag is real. Okay, that's good. Well, that's a relief. 
All right, and that's the one that's the sort of um, the dark horse, if I say. A36 7231. This is a 2003. Yeah. It's not vintage, it was, it's it? just a Chanel bag. But with the bags confirmed as genuine, it's now down to whether they have as much value as Sarah hopes. So do you think that bag's still in production? No, I don't think no. it's in production, but I also don't think it's worth much, to be no. honest. And this is sort of the news I was expecting, but it wasn't what I wanted to hear, really. I wanted to hear if it was worth a bit more, but... That's great. It's I'm great sorry. Help, anyway. I have oh, to tell you the way it is. Bye, Dan. Good to see you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thanks for that. Bye. Bye. They're all authentic anyway. That's good news. Uh, the unfortunate one is a small black one, which is a shame, really, because it's not worth the money I thought it might be worth. So hopefully we'll get to the deal and hopefully she'll take the offer. In Marbella, James is keen to close his first deal and has arranged a meeting with Lily and husband Leaf. Hi, Lily. Morning, James. How are you? Good morning, good, Hi, good, good. Morning. How have you been? Very good. Come and Very grab a seat. Good. You've got some really nice pieces mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Some of it, to be honest with you, is bordering on what we call sort of just the weight of the gold. OK. Um, so, but there are four or five items in there, a ruby and diamond ring and the uh, sapphire necklace. As a figure, we think it's around up to 20 grand's worth of jewellery uh, okay. as a secondary value. Okay. Uh, the market is flat, we are in a recession, yes. so yes. it's not all bad news. That's great. I hope that's not too disappointing. No, no, not at all. Well, thanks okay. for coming in. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank Cheers, thank you. Like you. It's been a pleasure. My meeting with James went very well. We are very pleased with his honest opinion and uh, his appraisal was spot on. I, you know, because I know what we paid, what my mum paid for. He did explain uh, the figure at 20,000. It was an honest opinion. So on the whole, we are both very happy. I'm always happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very pleasant and, uh, and I think we will keep in touch with James, showing him other pieces that we have. Despite not getting the full figure she was looking for, Lily is happy with an offer which can help fund her new designer watch. It was really nice from our point of view to get this one in the bag and to have an insight into the sort of clients that are out here in uh, Spain and uh, the sort of interesting people that you come across. And Lily is a fascinating person and I hope uh, she's a glimpse of uh, things to come. It's the beginning of another week at the pawn shop and boss James has arrived back from Spain. <laughs> oh no, what an idiot. <laughs> He's silly sod. What? What the... <laughs> Got you some presents here. Can I them? <laughs> oh my God, you are funny. I've got you one. I don't want one of them. You've got to have one. It's company policy. Oh my God, James. <laughs> Surely you know how to pay the... Uh... Oh, God, the um, whatever they're called. Just go like that. Oh, yeah. Lawrence? Look. Two sugars. <laughs> oh. You don't know you've been busy. I don't know like I've been busy. You're having a laugh. <laughs> Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. That's what I think about you being busy. For some of the shop's customers, an anxious wait is drawing to a close. In Surrey, single mum Sarah is waiting to find out if selling her designer handbags can provide a financial boost for her hair extensions company. I really hope that I get around three and a half thousand. Then I can really take the business to another level. I wish that phone would ring. It's driving me crazy. Oh my God. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, it's Patrick. Hi. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine, excited and nervous uh, at the same time. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was really nice to see the condition on the black and the beige one. The condition was really, really good. Fantastic. So, I really... Taken care yeah, of no, you can see that. Now, on the vintage one... It's not worth as much as I thought it was, which is really disappointing. Oh. Ordinarily... If we'd, we'd just done these the only way... And I'd just done these to the dealers. I, yeah. I wouldn't, I would have been around about two and a half, two, seven for all three. <gasps> oh no. But overall, because the, the, the beige and the black one were so good, so we'd actually found a buyer for them. Oh. So I can actually get you to the three and a half that you're looking for. <gasps> Fantastic. So you're happy with that? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Three and a half, two, three. Brilliant. I'll do it for that. That's fantastic. All right. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thanks, okay. Anne. Bye. 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 Super. Bye. <gasps> fantastic, Bianca. Fortunately, because of this uh, a private client we've got, has offered a lot more money, so I can get to her figures. And I'm a happy customer, which is always good. They gave three and a half. Wow, that's amazing. Well done, Mum. Well done. Well done. I'm so happy for you. Oh, I'm really happy for you. <laughs> I feel so happy. I feel really, really excited. I really want this business to work. Our dream's coming true now. Another client hoping the pawn shop can boost her career prospects is Millie. The shopaholic wants to sell two paintings to help her photography career. Oh, hi, I'm Millie. Um, I'm after Lawrence. Is and you found him. But will Lawrence be able to offer her the £10,000 she needs to turn her hobby into a fully fledged business? Oh, my painting. Oh. Well, do you want to take a seat? Which one do you feel most? Uh, I'll sit here, thanks. Thank you. So you paid 7000 for the Matador? Yes. And you paid, what, 3000 for uh, the...? Two. Two, two thousand. Yeah. The things with paintings is it's like any sort of finance, they can go up or down. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. When I first saw your paintings, I didn't think they were worth 10000 What, both of them together or just...? No, I just didn't see 10000 at all. What I do see was nearer 20 to 25,000. Really? That's the figure I had in my head. Really? Um, because, yeah, <laughs> the final figure I've come up with, we're looking at 6,000 for the Macubru. Really? Yeah. And. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. If I offered you 30 for this, would you 30? be happy? <laughs> yes. So if I gave you 39, you'd be even happier. Uh, Oh my God, definitely. So you're looking at 45,000 total. Oh my God, you're kidding. So what do you feel about that? Oh, I think we need some champagne, don't I we? I know, we should have some champagne. <laughs> oh my God, I might just buy a Lamborghini instead. No, no, but what? <laughs> Second hand one, though. Invest it wisely. Yeah, yeah. oh my God, that's. That my heart is going so fast. I bet it is, my heart. Wow, will go. I'm shocked. I'm happy and shocked. What are you going to do now? I'll probably go down the road and have a glass of champagne. Oh, good on you. I wish I could join you, but James is such a slave driver. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I really, really didn't expect that in a million years. So, yeah, I'm just I'm still in shock. I would definitely invest it into both my businesses and I'll probably take a little holiday, buy some more shoes and definitely some more art. 100% I'd buy some more art. Mm, lovely. Millie's left the shop a wealthy woman, but will James also be able to give Roy the good news he craves? He wants to pawn his beloved RV to raise £20,000 to start a holiday camp for fellow amputees. It's very difficult because if it was a watch, I could phone up 10 or 20 people or 30 people and have like, you know, 30 different bids for a watch in the space of half an hour. But an RV motorhome, 40 foot long, here in the UK, left-hand drive, it's like, who am I going to call? And it has been very difficult, and I am still struggling with it, but I'm prepared to make him an offer. I'm just sitting here waiting. <laughs> yeah, kind of nervous, really am. Uh, touch wood. Yeah, hello. Roy. Hello. How are you, mate? It's James here. Prestige, how are you doing? Um, it's all kind of down to you at the moment. <laughs> the ball's in your court, mate. I've got a figure for you. I can probably get you to 12 and a half if you need it, but I can't get you to 20. I've been trying to find someone, a dealer, that would say to me, James, at the end of that loan... I'm going to put my hand up and I'll have it off you. But I've yet to find someone, definitively, that would do that. So that's why I'm erring on the side of caution. Um, obviously nervous, but, um, all right, I'll take the offer. Just look after her for me. I'll look after her, mate. Don't worry, she'll be, uh, she'll be careful, she'll be safe. Be with me, don't worry about that. All right, mate, lovely. Okay. Cheers, James. Bye. Thanks, mate. Right. Cheers, bye. What did he say? Yeah, I'm going to take the finances got on it. I feel like quite a nice <laughs>
the offer is lower than Roy had hoped for, but it will be enough to start planning the holiday camp, although losing the RV will be a real sacrifice. It'll be all right. We get her back. I don't know, just um, someone else is going to have her for a minute, aren't they? That was really, really difficult. You know, feel for him because he wants to do this uh, amazing thing with this money. So um, from that point of view, I really, really would like to have got more money for him. <laughs> oh, my God, here mm. we go. No, I won't. <laughs> I won't. Right, well, we've got a busy, busy week, haven't we? <sighs> Looks like we've got a business to start. Yeah, cool. Haven't we? After a busy few months for the pawn shop, James has jumped at an opportunity to expand his business further. The shop's halfway down Hatton Garden. Lovely old building, you're going to love it. A potential new premises has come up, this time in central London. I'm really pleased for the business expanding. I'm absolutely gutted that he has insisted that I'm the one that has to go to London with him. What do you think? Love the building, love the road. No, it looks good, James, I must admit. This could be really, really special for us. This we... is a brilliant place to be, without a doubt. I'm 100%, I can feel that. If we clean this up, we can make this look absolutely amazing. It's yeah, hard. no, it's good. It is good. Back at base, the new venture is the perfect excuse for a celebration. I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive, a little bit nervous, perhaps. It's been an amazing year, but I'm looking forward to the unknown. We'll all make sure we'll stay in touch via our email. <laughs> we're looking forward to getting going in Hatton Garden with the new store and we're looking forward to seeing some of the high-end clients we know are going to come through the door there. No, it's going to be fantastic. We've got to talk about my package. <laughs> it's always a nervous time when you've got a new store, you're investing hundreds of thousands of pounds going into an area that you don't know. Here's to the future. Oh. Oh, cheers. So that'll be cheers. our new head office, will it? Yeah. Cheers. cheers. It certainly will be. Yeah. Yeah.